You're and up. you have to um, go into the, um, the uh, Homeland Security. You have to put your hands up and over your head. And some people have a difficulty doing that because they can't get their arm to go up. And since most people are bent forward and down with a forward head, chest down, they can't really get my arms up. So Can you demonstrate from the side? Same thing, good. That's so, do it again. Most people's posture is slightly rounded, a little forward head. And for that person to get their arms up, the limit is here. So clearly, if you want to get them up, you can't keep pulling on them, especially if, as you get older. Most people, they don't have a lot of uh, flexibility. So if I shifted my weight on my feet, now my arms are going up because I'm bringing my body under my arm. So you may notice that as my chest rises, since my shoulder blade is sitting on a curved surface, as my, the curvature changes, it actually slides down the back. And as my shoulder blade slides back and down, you can see the trajectory that it allows for your hand. So this is where you start if you have a problem with that particular position. And you can see that as soon as I get up here, my shoulder blades can come to here. And I have this range of motion. I recently had a woman who needed that motion because she told me that that's the position they want you in when you do your mammogram. So those are some applications. Uh, as well as, I don't have that problem so much, but if you needed to dry your hair, right, having the ability to have my elbow go in these positions allows my hand to go in these positions, right? So now to get to my hands to the back of my head, my elbow is not going to make it easy. What are we doing? Side. Oh. So, side raising. so if I wanted to get my hand to the other side, not that that's overly functional, but you know, if I needed to reach up over my head, again, after we get through Homeland Security and you gotta reach and put your valise or your bag up, right? And that is, you might use the fact that you lift the ribs Right? And you lift the ribs first by shifting weight, and you could shift your weight in two directions. I could shift it by having uh, the leg underneath it and go that way. But if I wanted to, to put my uh, bag over here, I might want to lift it and go the other way. Right? That's just a, a one application of that. You know, most people would actually go frontward. Joseph already showed you. You know, the basketball having that kind of a movement where the movement comes from uh, the legs, through the pelvis, through the spine, and each position of the uh, spine will determine which position your ribs are in. And the ribs will determine what positions are available to your shoulder blade easily. And it's the position of the shoulder blade that tells you your position of your arm. So. To summarize in that particular context, this is my range of motion just to the arm. That's as far as I can lift that arm. And my hand on my shoulder blade, when I move my shoulder blade, this is the extra range I get. If I wanted to go further, I'd move my ribs. And you can see, depending on how I, where my weight is, my arm can go to here, and if I shift weight, it goes all the way back. So, arm, arm and scapula, arm, scapular, rib cage, arm, scapular, and legs. Nice. Good. Okay. Um, it's not really.